Contrary to what Mohammedans assert about Muhammad's alleged noble characteristics, my own research leads to an opposite deduction. What are your conclusions? The most remarkable feature of the hadith is the fact that they expose and reveal the real characteristics of Muhammad, a man completely devoid of compassion, mercy, veracity, or nobility, a man who deliberately and continually manipulated, deceived, and betrayed the trust of his gullible and superstitious followers during all of his 23 years' mission. He used the wealth that he plundered and pirated from all of his innocent victims to bribe, induce, corrupt, entice, or buy off those who would otherwise not join his cult belief system. Our listeners should be made aware that for the first 13 years of preaching in Mecca, among his own kith and kin, less than 100 souls were willing to believe him or his message, although these Arabs were among the most illiterate, unlearned, and superstitious people in that area of the Middle East. His followers grew in numbers only after he started using terror, ambush, slaughter, plunder, and piracy, and his promise that those who die doing his bidding would end up in a paradise of eternal sexual and sensual bliss. The Quran has a special surah, Al-Anfal, number 8, dedicated for the sanctification by Allah of all of Muhammad's acts of piracy, the distribution of the booty, plunder, and slavery. Let me now recite only a fraction of the verses that prove my statements. Al-Ma'idah 5.119 Allah will say, this is the day on which the Muslims will profit from Islam. Al-Anfal 8.1 they ask you about the benefits of capturing the spoils of war. Tell them that the benefits belong to Allah and to His Messenger. So fulfill your duty to Allah and the Prophet. 8.69 So enjoy what you took as booty. The spoils are lawful and good. al Tauba 9.42 Prophet, had there been immediate gain in sight with the booty in front of them, and the journey easy and near adventure, they would all have followed you. 9.57. Some slander you, blaming you of partiality in the matter of the distribution of the offerings, the stolen spoils. If they are given part of these, they are pleased. But if not, they are indignant and enraged. 9.29. Fight against those people of the book, Christians and Jews, who do not follow what Allah and His Messenger acknowledge as the true religion, Islam, nor accept our law until they pay the jizya, tribute, tax, in submission and humiliation. Al-Fatih 48.19 He rewarded them with abundant spoils that they will capture. Allah has promised you much booty that you shall take and He has made this easy for you. Al-Duha 93.4 Soon will your Lord give you so much you shall be well pleased. Did He not find you poor and made you rich? Bukhari 4.46 I heard Allah's Apostle saying, Allah guarantees that he will admit the Muslim fighter into paradise if he is killed, otherwise he will return him to his home safely with rewards and booty. Of course, Allah will reward the pirates with the rape, enslavement and plunder of their innocent victims. Bukhari 4.376 While Allah's Apostle was accompanied by the people on their way back from Hunyan, the Bedouins started begging for things so aggressively that they forced him to go under a Samura tree where his outer garment was snatched away. On that, Allah's Apostle stood up and said, Return my clothes! If I had as many camels as these trees, I would have distributed them amongst you, and you will not find me a miser. Bukhari 4.377 While I was walking with the Prophet, he was wearing a Najrani outer garment with a thick hem. A Bedouin came upon him and pulled his garment so violently that I could see the imprint of the hem on his shoulder, caused by the violence of his pull. The Bedouin said, Give me something from Allah's fortune which you have. The Prophet turned, smiled, and ordered that a gift should be given. Muhammad's gift was very easy, since it was from the booty that he had just pirated from his slaughtered victims. Bukhari 4.374 The Prophet said, I give to the Quraysh so that they will desire Islam, for they are nearer to the life of ignorance and it is not strong in their hearts. In any language, this constitutes bribery. Bukhari 4.795 
I have been given the keys of the treasures of the world by Allah. Bukhari 5.512 The Prophet had their men killed, their children and women taken as captives. The captives were divided among the Muslims. Then the messenger began taking homes and property that were closest to him. Bukhari 5.620 When Allah gave Allah's apostle what he gave of the properties of the Hawazin tribe as war booty, the Prophet started giving some men 100 camels each. The Ansar then said, May Allah forgive Allah's apostle as he gives to Quraysh and leaves us although our swords are still dribbling with the blood of Quraysh. Allah's apostle was informed of their statement. So he sent for the Ansar and gathered them into a leather tent and did not call anybody else along with them. The Prophet explained, I give to these men who have newly deserted heathenism and embraced Islam so as to attract their hearts. Muhammad found that the easiest ways to the hearts and minds of his would-be followers are not words but bribes in this life and promises of even more in the hereafter. He murdered, dispossessed, and took booty from the Jews, the Christians, the Quraysh, and all others who were not among his followers, and distributed them as inducement and rewards to those who murdered in the name of Allah and his messenger. Bukhari 9.59 When the Prophet died, Arabs reverted to this belief. Bukhari 9.127 The Prophet said, I have been awarded victory by terror, so the treasures of the earth are mine. Ishaq 327. Allah made booty lawful and good. He used it to entice the Muslims to unity of purpose, so enjoy what you have captured. Ishaq 324. Allah told them how to divide the spoil. He made it lawful and said, a fifth of the booty belongs to the apostle. Tabari 8.16. Soon the trial became great for the Muslims and fear intensified. One said, Muhammad was promising us that we should eat up the treasures of Xerxes and Caesar, and now none of us even can go out to relieve himself. Tabari 8.116 So Muhammad began seizing their herds and their property bit by bit. He conquered home by home. The messenger took some of his people captive, including Safiya and her two cousins. The prophet chose Safiya for himself. When Diyah protested wanting to keep Safiya for himself, the apostle traded for Safiya by giving Diyah her two cousins. The women of Khaybar were distributed among the Muslims. Ishaq 515 When the people of Fadak heard of what had happened, they sent word to the messenger asking him to banish them and spare their lives, saying they too would leave him their property. So Khaybar became the prey of the Muslims, while Fadak belonged exclusively to the Messenger of Allah, becoming his personal property. Ishaq 594 The Apostle gave gifts to those whose hearts were to be won over, notably the chiefs of the army, to win them and through them the people. Tabari 9.196 Fatima, Muhammad's daughter, and Ali, Muhammad's adopted son, and Fatima's husband, came to Bakr demanding their share of the inheritance of the Messenger. They demanded Muhammad's land in Fadak and his share of Khaybar's tribute. Ladies and gentlemen, so-called believers and unbelievers, all the Muhammadan records show that he died a very wealthy man, contrary to all the lies and deception perpetrated and repeated by his later and current followers who tell an otherwise ignorant world that he died in poverty.